In 1954 in Italy, there were hundreds of reports of UFOs around the country. In a prior episode, we covered one of these famous cases in which thousands of individuals spotted several UFOs directly above a soccer stadium during a game. This case occurred on October 27, 1954 in the Tuscany region of Florence. Just four days later, on November 1st, a woman named Rosa Lotti reported a strange alien encounter that has been deemed one of the most credible in Italian history. There were multiple witnesses, physical evidence left at the scene, and Rosa was deemed to be a reliable witness. In this episode, we will examine this famous case, an event that became to be known as the Sanina case. On Monday, November 1st, 1954, Rosa Lotti, an Italian peasant, would have a life-changing experience. Rosa was 46 years old at the time and a mother of four children residing on a farm named La Colina between the towns of Sanina and Caponoli. Rosa didn't go into town much and spent most of her time working long hours on the farm. This day, though, was very different. It was a Catholic holiday, and Rosa, being very religious, planned on walking into Sanina to visit her church in the cemetery there. She planned on placing carnations at the altar of the Madonna Pellegrina. Around 6.30 to 7 a.m., Rosa began her walk towards Sanina. She would walk on a footpath that cut through the fields and woods that she had traveled many times, carrying some clothes to change into when she arrived, and walking barefoot. Rosa planned on changing just prior into getting into the city so she wouldn't get her clothes or shoes dirty. Around 7.30 a.m., Rosa walked into a small clearing, which had a few small bushes and trees in it. She had crossed over this clearing before, but this time would be different. As she walked into the clearing, she would spot a bizarre object close to a tree. It was like nothing she had ever seen before. It was spindle-shaped, around three feet wide at its widest part, and around six to eight feet long. On the lower half of the object, there was a door in which two seats could be seen. There was a window in the center portion, and the craft was gray, appearing shiny. A stunned Rosa watched the craft, and her attention turned towards something even more strange. Behind the craft, there were two bizarre beings. They were small, around three feet tall, and wearing a one-piece, tight-fitted suit with some sort of cape on their back. They wore helmets that were golden brown, similar to old leatherhead helmets. Their bodies were in proportion and were similar to a five or six year old. One unique feature of the beings was their upper lip was curved, so their teeth were always exposed. Generally though, they looked very similar to humans. The beings then began approaching Rosa and were speaking in some type of strange language, which she compared to Chinese. They appeared friendly and were laughing, seeming to have a good time. Although the beings appeared friendly, Rosa was frightened. Then shockingly, the beings suddenly grabbed Rosa's stockings and flowers. Rosa took issue with this in a timid manner, which seemed to prompt one of them to hand some of the flowers back. The beings then wrapped the remaining flowers, about five, in the stocking and tossed them in the craft. The beings then went inside the spindle and pulled out some sort of white package. As they turned back around, Rosa had already took off running. After Rosa was a little bit further away, she looked back and the craft was gone. Rosa wouldn't stop running until she got into Sanina. There, she would run into a friend, Anita Valenti. Anita immediately noticed something was wrong with her and Rosa told her the story. Rosa would then inform the Italian National Police Force and also the priest of the church she was going to visit. Rosa and the police went back to the scene, and there the police found a deep hole in the ground where the craft had been. Word spread around too, and soon many people began heading down the path to check out the site. Initially, the investigation focused on Rosa's story and the encounter. As more ufologists began looking into the case, though, 
it soon became apparent there were many others who witnessed something that day. Luigi Danini and his daughter would allege to see some type of object descend down from the sky into the woods. They initially thought it was a meteor, but it slowed down. Romaldo Berti, then 25 years old, claims on the day of the incident, he saw what he described as a luminous rocket that was like a cigar. It had flames coming out of the tail and flew out of Sanina Woods. Perhaps the most interesting story, though, comes from two boys, Ampolino Torzini, age 6, and his older brother, age 9. They spotted Rosa talking to the strange beings in the woods. They would run back and tell their father, and when they returned, the object and Rosa were gone. However, they did see the deep hole in the ground. In addition to these witnesses, there was a hunter who claims while he was out in the woods that morning, he saw the object land in the woods. Multiple independent witnesses would see this craft in Sanina around the same time as Rose's experience. Reports were very similar, and some said the object stopped and hovered for several moments as if it was about to land. One of the more interesting aspects of this case is that the craft appeared to return the same day of Rose's encounter around midnight. On November 1st, 1954, Giuliano and Tusco Coselli were sleeping when they were awoken by screams outside. They ran outside and a man on a motorcycle named Marcello Giovanni was looking up at the sky. The three of them would watch as the UFO floated and then disappeared behind some hills. Giovanni would later recall it remitted a bluish white light and was completely silent. As mentioned previously, in 1954 Italy and other western countries, they experienced a rash of UFO reports. So what can we make of Rose's case? Rose's case appears to have several credible aspects to it, First, there were many reports of this specific UFO in Sanina and around Sanina during that time, including the same day of Rosa's sightings. Also, there were witnesses at the scene who claimed to have seen Rosa talking with the entities. One other factor has to do with Rosa herself. She was deemed highly credible. Not only did the ufologists believe her, but many of the townspeople found her story to be credible and stated she was reliable. The physical evidence found at the scene seems to support her story, although the evidence isn't overwhelming. It's possible Rosa could have dug that hole herself, although this raises the question of why. With all the UFO reports happening around the country at the time, was Rosa trying to achieve fame and possibly fortune? It seems like a possibility However, more likely than not, she probably wasn't interested in it. By all accounts, Rosa lived a quiet life and rarely left her farm. She was very religious, and it doesn't appear that she was trying to fabricate the story. Over the years, Rosa has been interviewed and questioned by a variety of professionals, including the police, ufologists, and even family and friends. Her story has remained consistent. In addition, the one-piece, tight-fitted silver suits is an outfit that we have reported many times on this channel. Rose's story is one of many that occurred during this busy period of UFO activity in Italy in the 1950s. In future episodes, we'll explore more of these cases from 1950s Italy.